So, Father God, we just um, thank you for this evening. And we thank you for everything that you're doing, not what you've done, but what you're doing now. And we thank you that no weapon ever formed against any one of your people shall prosper, that you go into their homes, Lord God, and you meet every need, Lord God. You said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, therefore there is no want. When we awaken consciously to the truth of who we are, we will find that there are no wants or needs that you've already met everything. And so we glorify you, we lift you up, and we thank you for healing by the blood of Jesus. We thank you that by the blood of Jesus, even Tawana is healed, that um, everyone on the call tonight is healed in whatever area that they're challenged in, if it's mentally, if it's physically, if it's financially, if it's through uh, family challenges, that the blood of Jesus came to resurrect and heal the people. All of the blood and the chastisement that was upon him, it brought healing. And so we declare and decree a financial breakthrough. We declare and decree by the prophetic mantles on our life, uh, prophetic healing. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus, prophetically strengthening, a kararapo shata, that I am strength. We speak the statements of I am, I am strength, I am love, I am peace, I am joy. We are in the spirit of the Lord. I am dunamis power, I am Holy Spirit. Spirit. I am moving forward. I am unstoppable in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree these things and these words over our life. We speak those things as though they are. We thank you, Lord God, for confidence and assertiveness in the name of Jesus that goals that have been set are being met, oh God. We thank you for debt cancellation through the spirit of the living God. Uh, prosperity now come to your people and we declare and decree we are prosperity. We are prospering in ways like never before that prosperity is running us down. We declare and decree to the heavens that there is no weapon ever formed against us that can prosper. Your words said, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And I thank you that you're drying up that uh, that 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 uh, liquid, Lord God, in her ears, oh God, that you're hearing the prayers that she's prayed in the name of Jesus, that your miracle season has begun. I thank you for the connections with your people. I thank you for all that you're doing by your stripes, that all things are healed. Thank you, Lord God, that you said you shall supply us sufficiently according to your riches and glory. And because you said it, Father God, we speak and decree, we believe, we receive, we're justified by faith, we believe, we receive, Lord God, all that you have, the inheritance of he heaven and earth, we receive, Lord God, that all of our enemies have been slayed in the name of Jesus. And it is so, and it is so. We thank you that wisdom is flowing, knowledge is flowing, understanding is flowing, the spirit of impartation. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for change through the bloodline in the name of Jesus, that you tear down strongholds in the heavens and you tear them down in the earth, oh God, and that you reset and recalibrate our lifeline and our uh, family inheritance down to the 10th generation, Lord God, that they shall be successful and they are financially uh, fit. We thank you that we own houses and um, land in the name of Jesus that you made us the head and not the tail. We are the beginning and the end, and we understand, Lord God, that you made us way changers, that you created a movement in us, and God, you're doing this thing in the name of Jesus. And by the blood, you cover us, you cover us. We thank you for the core understanding of who you are and your visitations in this season. In the name of Jesus, and it's so, amen and amen. Amen. So, yes. So it says, um, before a leader is birthed, there's always a process. The process the leader experiences entails his or her success along with failure. However, the most important part of mentoring is the development of the leader, which in requires the leader to become consciously aware of his self or her, I mean, her, his or herself in such in areas such as self-awareness, accountability, and self-management. Um, those are just few, but practice, practicing greatness is a book you guys should begin to read. Innately, these areas are required to not only build and birth leadership in the leader, but for the leader to have stepping stones in which they are able to groom their followers who are potential leaders, which is where mentoring and leadership derives from. So this is... um. 
a guy, Dawson Trotman, had an initial goal he started out with in his early years of leadership. And I thought this was profound because um, in most cases, God has me doing all types of terms. I'm doing this, that, and the other. And people may not understand that, but anyway, it says, after some time, Trotman would reevaluate himself along with the goals he had formerly set, which was winning souls, and he would see the need to change the focus to building strong disciples and recruiting laborers for God. Now, how this change came about, this change will come through Trotman's experience with a convert who was not followed up on regarding discipleship a year prior. A year, well, in, within a time span, what happened is he ran into someone that he had converted, um, you know, um, winning the soul, but there was no one to follow up on him. And so um, because of the experience, he shifted into a new area, which was mentoring um, or discipling souls. Um, now it's not just winning souls, you know. So Trotman had discovered the following aspect of his work to be disciple training due to the fact that discipleship would be the means of transforming the soul, which is why mentoring is important. Um, those are some key points. You get into the prophetic and you begin to understand that it, what, whatever kind of leader God has called you to, you're going to have to speak over people's lives. You're going to have to pray for them, which is prophetic, speaking to God. Um, it changes people's lives, even when it seems like their lives are not changing and, you know, we're struggling through um, with them. And we do struggle with them because I am my brother's keeper. You know, um, there's oftentimes that we don't look at ourselves for who we are, and even we don't look at how much we have imparted into other people's lives. Um, it, it takes, um, it's necessary that we do, not for the ego's reasoning, but for the growth and development to really sit back and say, me and God, we did this. You know, I see a great person coming out of this individual. Um, when they didn't want me to push, I kept pushing. Um, when they didn't know I was praying, I was praying. Um, it's not for your ego, but it's for God's glory, all right? Um, um, when I did the interview for the mentoring, there was a young lady who told me what she did in her business. But the thing that stuck out the most is what she was doing in her business, she was not getting going forward, Um I think it's important for us to be able to link our our um, business with Christ because Christ brought business people into the um, um, the church or into his um, ministry, the way. And the reason why he did is because, first of all, um, a fisherman has the expertise of fishing, period. No, he has the dynamics and the mental understanding of how to catch fish. So he will, as he is led by Christ, and it was so, he will be able to catch souls. All he has to do is um, have the experience with someone to help him to understand that there's great profitability in souls. And the profitability of winning souls has a lot to do with um Beloved, I would that you would prosper in John, First John. Um, beloved, I would that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Um, Jesus, um, his feelings on prosperity for the individuals that he um, healed out in those streets had to do with transformation of their lives. So that's the profitability because when you see an individual that's living um, just below um, low income or the one, people that are on welfare, um, what you want to do is be able to get um, a hold of them and the ones that are really reachable and be um, that anointed vessel to change their mind and their heart. And that's why we're here. The underdog is the one that Jesus focused on. He never focused on the people in the church. 
Um, he focused on the underdog, the ones that were out in the street, that had been left on the wayside, um, the ones that were struggling for healing, but they couldn't get it because of whatever reasons um, that, you know, the leaders and pastors of that day and time never paid attention to them. So um, I remember one of the ladies I interviewed saying that she loves to go to church and work and, you know, she prays and she's on hospitality, but she doesn't talk about the prophetic gifting with her church. And um, so while I was talking to her, you know, I just kind of like listened. And um, later on I asked her why, and she said because people always, you know, called her strange. And I could relate. But in the midst of it, um, one day when God was ready, I found people that were prophetic. Um, I began to read books, and I seen this man who had heard who had heard things like I heard, and he was in another city and state, and I could relate to what he was saying where no one else really understood. So, you know, I try to tell her that you cannot be amongst the masses with a rhema gift or a gift where God is speaking to you because if they don't hear it, they'll make you believe that you don't hear it. So it's important to be in a group of people that actually believe um, or hear or have experiences like you because you're able to grow. Um, people that don't have the same experiences, they're not going to grow in that capacity. Um, I keep going into churches to help because the prophetic is supposed to be in the church to lead and guide the ministers. I know that, you know, some people don't understand that, but God sends the prophets into the church for warning and edification. That's the only reason why we are in there. If we go, if there's pastors that do not hear what we're saying or um, they they, they doubt or whatnot, um, God will take us out of their, um, out of their view, out of their presence, because um, the word of God is our lifeline, all right? So that's a lot to understand, but there's a lot in this prophetic walk to understand, and we're in a time and season of prophecy. So you understand that you don't speak anything, but what you want to see come to pass in these days now. That's it. All right, so I mentioned on the prophetic training because we hear, see, but we don't know what to do with it unless we have someone that we can call in you know, we begin to bounce it off each other. God begins to discern and speak. When you're left like that and you're not using a gift, you can go into um, temptation and, and experience trials and tribulations because you're not working with the gifts that God is trying to um, birth through you, which is why, again, um, Dawson Trotman um, saw the need to build those converts and begin to set up a new program because he experienced some things um, from the book, the writing. He experienced some things because he did not listen to God. See, he listened to God because he had an experience with someone, but he was going through trials and tribulation because he was not doing what he was called to do. And so this is why people that have been in um, the past um, leaders and they leave these hallmarks concerning mentorship or um, um, some of the things that we can read concerning timelines of Watchman Nee. Um, and I, I've read about Watchman Nee um, when I was younger, um, powerful Chinese um, converter. He went to China and did a lot of conversion. But um, what is the mentor for, you know, um, I talked to a young lady here. She's about 25. Um, she works in Sunday school, and she gave me her understanding on Sunday school, but she didn't tell me um, in this interview that she was going to school to be a doctor, that when she's in school at UNLV, she's an advisor. 
um, and, and that she tutors. All of this is mentoring. And so in the information, what I did is went back and I gave her books to read to build her confidence beyond the church because your, your hope of glory and what you give to the children's ministry is not, not just there. If you, you take it out in the street, imagine how it can build a church because, you know, it's a wonder of how God might be using her. So I gave her some books and information on how to become more assertive and um, confident in what she's doing because maybe she's more confident in the Word of God teaching the children her um, um, her study. You don't see that there are a lot of ministers that turn into doctors. Um, I think Luke was a doctor um, or a lawyer, but one Luke was a doctor in the Bible. So um, mentoring and um, building disciples is very important because even in your job, here, I was telling the young lady prior that the Myers-Briggs personality test and interviewing process is really good. If you can find an interviewing process, it's really good to eliminate the challenges that she's having concerning retention. The Myers-Briggs test, um, it almost tells you everything that you were called to do through your personality. Um, moving on... Um, what that does for these people is give God glory because you're helping to realign them. Do you understand? Both of the interviewers have a um, relationship with God, but their pastors are not able to lead them in their workplace. They are edified um, of both through Christ in the church, but there's not a whole lot of profitability in the workplace. And so we have to ask ourselves why, when the Great Commission was not in the church, you know, um, when we look at the scripture on the Great Commission, it says, Matthew 10 and 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go to the disciples of all, go and make, I'm sorry, disciples or mentor, mentees of all nations. Go and make disciples or mentees of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. So we find going into all nations is the focus. Why? You know, why is that the focus? Because Jesus wants people to know that he is the way of prosperity. But if the people don't get the word to transform their lives, even the scripture that I just read, then they will always be poor-minded. Do you understand what I'm saying? If a person is not taught to respect themselves, if they have no self-knowledge, how can they prosper? Eventually, they're going to have a falling, right? So um, I skimmed through this, but, you know, I, I gave all of them books and, and information that they can go back to that will strengthen them because what we find is that if we go into the church, most people don't understand how your business ties into ministry. What is ministry? Ministering, administration. Who's good at administrative work? That's what it is. You know, when you're, whatever you're doing, you know, Honora's getting ready to graduate. But her job, and I taught them a long time ago, the work, the schooling equates to your spiritual nature. Everything that you do from the time that you get up in the morning equates to your spirit, spiritual nature. You may not see it because you have not adapted your mind to think spiritually. 
You don't think about getting up in the morning and praising God. You don't get up and think about going within and seeing those th things as though they are. You don't get up and think that here's um one phrase that says, I am successful, rich, and happy. You don't think these things. You know, people get up in the morning and because they're weighted down by their issues, they get up thinking about, about the weighty matters. And that's where the prophetic comes in and it changes things because as you practice, you begin to change your life. You know, too much emotional stimulation, too much focus on I need it now. Listen, you messed yourself up a long time ago. You came into a family that was broke. That does not mean that you have to stay that way. Because you learn consciously to be broke, you have to learn how to consciously become successful. I always predicated. We look at the word success and say, I am successful. We begin to start using um, Moses' words, saying I am, and practicing I am. And because I practice who I am, love, who I am, joy, I am peace. I, I begin to see it. I am power. I am walking in authority. I begin to see it. Why? Because we're in the season, in the age of spirit. So whatever you speak will become a part of your manifestation. Are you broke? You're speaking it, your mind think it, then you need to change it. Cognitively, consciously, becoming aware. This is the problem. No one has taught anybody about consciousness, not even in our churches. No one is teaching people that you must be aware right now while you're on this line, or you will not reap the harvest that is designed through it. All right? So on, on, on page 38, this is very important. We see here the stages of hearing. For if there is no word, there is no hearing. If there is no hearing, there is no faith. We must believe what the Spirit reveals and then act upon it. Some truths are being revealed now. These are present truths. Now, this present truth that I'm giving you does not have to manifest today because we work in spirit and in truth. And spirit comes to us through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge can happen like that. Wisdom can happen over a period of time. I function in wisdom. I can function in knowledge. And I function in understanding because I'm able to go and see the word beyond the letter. I can visually see what's happening in the word. Some of you may function in knowledge more readily. And that can be the place that you're in right now. But it's, it's, it's important for you to get a grasp of understanding. Am I a dreamer? Am I a seer? Is this who I am right now or is this who I am forever? Do I hear the word of God? You know, um, does God speak to me? Of course he does because he's a part of who we are. We're his children. God, God is right. So we see here the stages of hearing for if there is no word, see, without any word, there is no hearing. And it's nothing to be heard. So everything that we hear, it should be valuable enough for us to use it because the subconscious mind is taking in good and bad. That's why when we prophesy and we tell people, I see some people around you that are no good for you, it could be because they're not speaking um, the things that need to be spoken in your life and you're ingesting this and it's hindering you. It can be all different kind of things, but you could use that example and say, where am I with this? Because some people believe that it's okay that they're around people 
people that are saying negative things or they're doubting. But as much as they talk about doubt, then if your spirit man is not strong enough, you're taking in all of that information. And that can be causing you not to progress. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing from the word. Everyone is God. Everyone is God. Because we all have the power of God. We just don't responsibly use it. We don't we don't act like we're children of the most high God. So um it says word. In the New Testament, there are two types of word, the logos and the rhema. The logos is writ, that written word of God in Strong's implying in the Greek something said, the divine expression of the Father, which is Christ, the reason and motive of the Father, the kingdom and the spirit. These are all found in the written word of God. So it's the divine expression of Father which is Christ, the reason or motives of the Father. And, you know, every time you listen to the Father, my Father, the divine reasons of my Father, the divine reasons of um, my Father, the divine motives of my Father, um, the divine expression of my Father, the kingdom and the spirit, you know. In John 6, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. It wasn't about other people. He told them, I and my Father are one. As you get into a place and you begin to meditate on I and my Father are one, you begin to connect with that because it becomes a reality the more you say it. It's just like somebody saying, um, I don't like this person or that. They're programmed to say I don't like because they've been in the presence of people saying I don't like. A child is born and they begin to grow up and talk about they don't like. Where did the words come from? They heard somebody say it. They didn't create that word. Amen. So the word of God, it is eternal and it lasts forever. We hear words from God that we've never heard before. And we began to run and say, where did that come from? Because we know it was not our mind, which is spiritual training to know when you're hearing yourself and when you're hearing the Father's divine expression. So here, the word rhema is where we get the prophetic from. Rhema, it rains from heaven. Rhema is where we get the prophetic from, to speak the word of God prophetically or to prophesy that which has been inspired by the spirit within you. It's an inspiration through the spirit within you. In the Old Testament, the logos can be compared to the Hebrew word, word uh, dabar, which is in Strong's number one. Six nine seven. It's the interesting. It's interesting that the word wilderness is also derived from this word dabar, wilderness. It it puts a whole new perspective on the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness or the desert. In the Old Testament, the rhema can be compared to Hebrew word. Um, e h in Strong's implying the spoken or blown word. So the prophetic is blown on us. It is um, blown on us. And uh, a scripture that you can use to meditate on um, here it says John 10, 3 and 4. To him the poor he goes before them and the sheep follow him but they know his voice. And, and this here is not hard but it's not easy. Um, for me I have been hearing God for a long time, and so I'm more apt to look for the still, small voice within me before I do anything and to follow it um, before I follow other people or things. Why? Because I'm used to hearing and, and dreaming and seeing. And if I don't dream and see and hear, I feel lost. 
So um, she says here, in your prayer closet, take time to ask the Lord your, um, your prayer name or the name that God is giving you. We all have been given a specific name by the Lord, so now ask him what that name is. The word implies... Um, the word name implies honor, authority, and character. So what we are truly asking is what our honor, authority, and characteristics is in him and in the kingdom. All right? Then you have um, the ability to write your names there um, and the scriptures to look it up um, when you take courage to ask those questions. Any questions tonight? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, so let's just look at um, real quick. I was looking I was looking at um, And somebody get ready to pray. Hmm. All right. Let's see. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, this is a good one. You can look at this up for yourself, but I challenge you to um, begin to let's see add. I'm sending these to you guys the names of God to your. Um, declarations and so to speak um, mm. <laughs> all right um, the key would be speaking them in this manner if I can get it right. I am would be the um beginning to each annunciation. So I am L. I am El Eloah, I am Elohim, I am El Shaddai, I am Adonai, I am Jehovah, you can use Yahweh, I am Jehovah Jireh, I am Jehovah Rapha, I am Jehovah Nisi, I am Jehovah Mekadesh, in that manner. All right, and I guarantee by the end of the week you'll feel empowered. The um, scriptures that go with them are there. You can learn something different. But why? Elohim is the creator. I am a creator, aren't you? El Rohi, God sing. We're all seers. You know, we speak speak those things as though they are. El Olam, everlasting God. We are everlasting because we are eternal beings. El Gabor, mighty God. That mighty God lives within us. All right. Okay, so who's praying? God bless the recording is ending. Amen. <laughs>